When you, when, as a production designer, as mm. you are now, when you get a script um, and you read it for the first time, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the story or are you, are you seeing the sets? Take me through the kind of process. You sort of, I always do a, I mean, I read the script the first time and just think about it for, for like half a day or something. Then I usually read the script through again and I do a very simple page count breakdown for each set that you get to. Because for me, um, Divergent was a good example. It's fifty percent of the film was 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 written as being underwater in a big un underground in a big cave. And it's like, oh. so you, and it, sometimes people won't be aware of that, and you need to think. I think of go through all those things to work out that stuff, and then I work up. Then I start thinking about what those spaces mean to the audience, where they're important in the film, um, where they're really important for the character. So I, you start thinking about you know. Um, before you start thinking about the 3D space that a character will occupy that's described as the living room, you know, described as the Victorian living room, but what is that? And you start thinking about, I, I end up generally thinking about the 3D space and what that can be and what's important for that character. Then you start thinking about who that character is and what their place is in the, in the, in the movie. And um, you to run through a whole bunch of different things and it takes a lot of time to settle. And at the same time, I'll probably start doing some image research online usually just to start if it's relevant to start bringing up stuff um, occasionally employing concept classes but generally that's like a step too far at that point um, it's it's important for you to be able to talk to the director about what's important for that character at that moment it's also important to have an appreciation of what you might have to explain as a story beat for the audience I mean a good example of that is if you've got a factory or a, I mean I think in Diversion we had a, an underground quarry where there were lots of rooms off the quarry which I discussed the directors bring it out of the quarry above ground into abandoned buildings but you're walking down corridors in a lot of places and it's important the audience might need to know that at the end of that corridor there's a room where something bad has happened before so you instantly as well as designing the corridor to give you that feeling you need to make it recognizable so that the second time the audience is heading down there they get they have some sort of you know, apprehension so you have to start thinking about that kind of stuff as well. So there's loads of logistics. Most of the time, I spend a lot of time thinking about um, what that set room environment needs to be for whatever happens in the story in there, or the character who inhabits it. You know, the baddies lair, or you know, a, 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 you know, a child's school, or something like that. You know, what, what that because it will mean something to that character and in the story and, and you, you, you really try to sort of try and get to the heart of those things and they can be quite abstract you know you, know, you can decide that the main thing a whole building has to feel is safe as long as that's fine and you work away from that you make sure that nothing you do from your gut gets you out of that sort of feeling and, and those kind of things that's why it's, it's very different being a designer to being an art director where you, you know that none of that you're just you know making sure a, a, a product within those sort of remits that have been described to you is Done, you know. um, and in, your, in terms of your process, do you sketch yourself? I mean, do you like still drawing or I, um, do you do 3D models? So I do a lot more 3D modelling lately than I do sketch because usually it's about um, very quickly showing in a, a 3D environment because it's much more real to what you finally feel and see. Um, and it's also good because you can generate a 3D model and I like the fact that when you show someone on the computer screen a 3D model, you're looking at it on a 2D plane. So it's very much like the view you'll get with the camera rather than looking at a card model and you can explain what the set's going to be but it's no good for working out how camera shots are going to really work it doesn't give you anything like the information um, I'll sketch plans mainly to just talk about progression of spaces um, 3D sketching really only briefly because so much of the interiors for me about how they're going to be lit that, that I don't think that brings enough to it in terms of what you see and take out of it which is another very important part. You know, the next thing I'll do after talking to the director about the space is, is immediately involve a visual effects supervisor, um, but most importantly, depending on what's being done the set, but most importantly a DP, because if you're building a set, for instance, you know, I'm very keen on having ceilings on rooms, I like to see them, I don't like them to disappear off, then you've got to discuss how you're going to light that and how it's going to work, because there's no point in presenting something to a director of photography, you can't light it, because A, you'll hear about it, and B, they have to light it. <laughs> so mm. you, you need to have a very close relationship about that space you're creating to do things in it that, that sort of respects and maintains all the ideas you had to start off with about what that place should be for the character and, and mise-en-scene that's occurring. So much of what you should do as a designer should kind of just disappear, should not interact. You know, you, know, you need to 
you're always playing with how much you're showing the audience, how much you're leading your audience into the thing. You know, I, I really don't like it when you see a character pulls out a gun in a movie and it's just the most amazing thing. You can see the concept art work that's gone into it and all the discussions with the studio that have gone into it. And yet sometimes that's good. You know, the guns in Men in Black were amazing because they were just so funny and great. And whereas some things when you see sort of Judge Dredd, there's Stallone Judge Dredd pull out his gun, it's like, oh, for God's sake. I know it's been done in the concept, in the, in the comic book, but still it's like, uh, just don't... It's almost too much. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game. You're always fighting making it all disappear so it's all seamless but then there's some points where you need to the character's room needs to feel evil so you can't be too you can't take a back foot too much because it just won't have that effect or it's how you make it look evil do you make it that's in something that's in your face or do you do just something that's as soon as the thing as a result of a series of shots so it's that kind of world you work in